welcome back to introduction of to business analytics. This is Hari Rajagopalan, and we are going to probably discuss what is what I would say is the last part of descriptive analytics. And even though uh, we are saying we are in descriptive analytics, we are actually slided over to predictive. And today we're going to talk about goodness of fit. Uh, for discrete distributions. So here is an example of a discrete distribution. Now, this distribution of student grades has been discretized. So for example, if your grades were out of 100 and A was you know, 90 or above, right? So we basically grouped all that values from 90 to 100 into this category called A and assigned it a value of 4.0. Everything between 85 to 89.999, which is essentially a continuous value, has been grouped into a B plus. So I hope you understand the meaning of discretizing your, your data. So we have discreted, discretized this into three, six, eight different uh, categories. And here is the number of students in those categories and their probability, which is essentially the percentage five divided by the total number of students in this. I think there's about 50 students in the class. So discrete probability distributions are based on discrete values. And you know it is a discrete distribution if you can create a table of possible values and a non-zero probability for each value. and if it is continuous, you'll have an infinite number of values. So this is the 50 students in class. In a continuous distribution, you'll have infinite possible values. So let's talk about goodness of fitness tests. Now, let's talk about different discrete distributions. The first one was binary. And in a binary, you have four assumptions. The first one is there are only two possible outcomes per trial yes or no, success or failure, right? And each trial is independent. Probability of success or failure remains constant. Number of trials are fixed. So confirm these four assumptions, and there's really no need to perform a goodness of fit test. And we'll talk about binomial distribution with an example. Other discrete distributions we talked about, negative binomial, which models the number of trials to produce a fixed number of events, right? How many, how many times should you do this before you get three successes or four successes? Geometric distribution models the number of trials to produce the first event. So how many times should you do this before the first, what, before you actually get the first success? Hypergeometric probability assumes you're drawing samples from a so small population with no replacement. So let's say, let's say we have five uh, people in the class. I'm asking them randomly picking someone to ask questions, right? So you have a one out of five chance the first question to be picked. That's 20%, one out of five. Now, if I say once you're asked a question, you could be picked again, then your probability remains constant, right? Becomes a binary binomial distribution. You could be picked, you need not be picked. I'm gonna ask 10 questions, that's the number of trials. You have a 20% chance of getting picked. But if I say on the other hand, once you get picked, I won't pick you again. So you have five people. First question, there's a 20% chance of getting picked. Second question, if you didn't get picked, now there are only four people in class. Now you have a 25% chance, one in four chance of getting picked. Third question, two people are out. There are only three people left. Now it's a 33.33% chance of getting picked, right? So each time I'm picking, you draw a sample without any replacement, the probabilities will change. So remember this, we did talk about this very beginning of our descriptive analytics, right? So let's look at an example so let's say the probability of a defective product is 1.5 percent essentially you know 1.5 percent of the products that come you know one two two and one and a half are defective and you are trying to model a sample of 30. 
So we're going to use Excel, uh, use the binom.dist function. And here's the probability of getting zero defects, one defect, two defects, three defects, and so on. You can also get the cumulative probability. Let's stop right here and move to Excel so that we can see how we can do this for binomial distribution. Okay, so here is the data file, um, and here we have zero number of defects, zero to 30 in a sample, and we could have zero defects, we could have one defect, we could have two defects, we could have three defects, and so on. We could also have figured out the probability of getting less than three or more than three. So let's look at each one of them, okay? So probability of getting zero defects. So let's go to this binom.dist. So the first thing is, what is the number? The number of successes. In this case, well, it's not really a success if you're looking for defects, but you're looking at zero right now. Number of trials is 30. The probability, as we know, is 1.5, and we don't want a cumulative value at this point. All right, so that's 63.54. Probability of getting one is 29.03, of two is 6.4, of three is 0.9, and you can start seeing it drops pretty dramatically, right? So, as you can see, it gets pretty close to zero by six or seven defects, right? So now let's look at the cumulative probability, which is nothing but this plus this. So you, instead of putting false here, you will put true and what it will do is it will just add the probabilities so 63.54 percent is the same for zero for one it's 29 plus this it gives you 92 then it's 98 and so on and you'll notice that it will pretty much come very close to 100 percent that is the probability of getting what does this cumulative probability mean it is the probability you will have three or less what is the probability you're going to have two or less defects, one or less defects, and that's what cumulative probability is. So what is then if 99.995% is the probability of getting five or less defects, if you want to know what's the probability of getting more than five defects, then you just do one minus that, which would be 0 0.005. So let's say the probability of getting more than three defects is one minus this value, and that's about 0.1%. So depending on what your alpha is, you know, if you're willing to accept, um, you know, you want it less than 1%, then, uh, um, you know, you're, then any time you get a batch with more than three defects, three or more defects, you're going to reject that particular batch, right? And so it's, it's pretty easy for binomial distribution on how to, kind of look at to see whether it fits in or not. So you get a batch of 30. If you have three or more, you reject that batch. Anything less than three, zero, one, or two, you can accept that batch, okay? So we've taken care of binomial. What if we had a Poisson distribution? Uh, remember Poisson, it models the count of events over a constant observation space, usually time. Values must be integers that are greater than or equal to zero. Example, number of sales per day in a store, right? So maybe let's take an example of accident counts. So safety inspector monitors the number of accidents per month. He knows on average you get about 2.24 accidents. Now some of you have often ask questions of how do you get a 0.24 um, accident? You can either have one or you can have two or you can have three. Well, this is the average, remember? So, you know, if you had two accidents over three months, then it's about 0.66 accidents per day. So this is an average value. So he takes the data from a random sample of 50 months, and essentially this is what he gets. Um, three months have zero accidents, one month has 11, two months have 19, three accidents, not one month, I apologize. Zero accidents is three, uh, three times. Uh, one accident happens 11 times, 11 different months. Two accidents happen 19 different months. Three happens nine times, four happens eight times. And the Excel file has the data. So let's, let me go through it in PowerPoint and then I'll show you the Excel file. So 
here we go. What we end up doing is this is the observed frequency. And, and I'm going to show you how to use this counter function to actually calculate this data. So eight is months is four or more is what is eight. Okay, and I'll show you the formula in Excel. Uh, we are going to use poison.dist um, using the value, which is the number of activities, um, number of accidents. Mean is 2.24 and, and cumulative. Uh, we will we don't want cumulative, so we'll say false and we'll find the probabilities of these accidents happening. The expected frequency is this probability multiplied by your sample size. So 50 multiplied by 10.65 gives you this and so on. And then your chi-square is given by observed minus expected squared divided by the expected. And so you can see here here is the chi-square value, comes to about 4.61. So most of it is zero, except here it's uh, two accidents happen more frequently than expected, but it's still not that much of a problem because if you look at the p-value, it comes to about 32%. So using the chi-square dot test, so you could say this is, this is a Poisson distribution. So let's stop here and shift this to Excel. All right, so here is the Excel file and here is the data. So the data doesn't come very cleanly like this, but it actually comes as raw data file here for 50 months. Here are the number of accidents. So you can, you have the average given to you. Here's your sample size. And so for zero, you're gonna use this COUNTIF function, COUNTIF and then you're gonna select this entire row here, right? And you're gonna put a dollar sign on both sides so that it doesn't go anywhere. And then you're gonna put C7 because that's the number of accidents you wanna count. So that's three, these are all the same, but for four, you want four or more. So we are going to use a small change. So we are gonna select the entire range, but criteria within quotes you're going to put greater than or equal to and then you're going to put an ampersand here and then you're going to select four so it's greater than or equal to four in there okay similarly for the probabilities here is the formula the c7 is a number of accidents is your value make sure when you select the average d3 you you put a dollar sign there and of course it's false because you don't want cumulative values and as you copy you can copy that down your expected value is 50 multiplied by the probability. So that gives you, this is what you're expecting, right? And then your chi-square is given by this formula. So you can get your total chi-square. So the only big really jump is for tw here, two here. But the p-value, which is your chi-square dist, um, as you can see, observed and expected comes to about 32.94%, which is, you know, even if you use 5%, this is greater than 5%. So this is, you can say this is a Poisson distribution for this problem. So that takes care of Poisson. But what if, what if you just have a categorical variable like color? So here's an example of car colors. Uh, you have data, which um, is actually the PPV, PPG industry looked at the global um, paint colors for new cars bought globally in 2012 and they came out with this distribution 22% is white 20% is silver so most people buy silver or white I can't figure out why 19% is black 12% gray then red 9 and so on right and then this is for our state so global data is true data um, our state is just made up data. I don't know what our state's uh, numbers are, so I just made it up, all right? I just put some numbers there. So we wanna see whether this actually matches with what we know to be true. So we wanna fit this to this distribution and see whether it's true. So hypothesis is our state's distribution of car colors is different from the global distribution. Null hypothesis is not different. And of course we have type one and type two error for this. And we do the same thing. So here is our total sample, 539 
different cars being sold, expected value would be 22% multiplied by this, each value multiplied by this. Your chi-square will be observed value minus expected value, right? Um, whole square divided by expected value, and then you add up all the numbers to get a chi-square of 19.558. And what you're really going to focus on is the two, if you look at it, this is pretty much the same. Silver looks pretty close, not too bad. Black's about one, doesn't really matter. No, gray and red are the ones which make a big difference. Brown and blue, others are all two, zero. So it's really red and gray which, which make the difference. And so red is about, you're expecting about 48, you're getting 34. Gray, you're, you expect about 64, you're getting 86. And this is where the discrepancy is having. So p-value, use chi-square.test. It's about 1.2%, which is less than alpha. So yeah, you can say our state has different than global patterns, but really it's because of red and gray. So let's take a look at this in Excel. So Excel doesn't look all too different. Here's the data you had, and here's the global. This is essentially the data. Um, you're going to go ahead and get the total here. Make sure you get your expected values from that and your chi-square using that formula, add up your chi-square, but really we are calculating the chi-square essentially to look to see where the big impact is. You use your chi-square dot test to get your p-value, and if it's less than alpha, you can reject your normal hypothesis, right? So really not anything earth-shaking, which you all of you have not seen before. All right, so this brings us to our final thoughts on descriptive anal analytics. And after this lecture, you're going to go on to uh, predictive analytics. So final thoughts on chi-square. Uh, there are several types of discrete variables, and they can produce different types of dis discrete probability distributions. The process by which you test your data to determine whether it follows a specific distribution depends upon that type of discrete variable. Here we looked at in summary binary data. He said check your assumptions, make sure, and then Excel, you can do it straight straight off in Excel. If it's data that you're counting, use Poisson goodness of fit, fit test. Other categorical variables, you can use the chi-square goodness of fit test and designate test proportions. With this, we finish the entire module on descriptive analytics, and we're going to move on to pre, uh, predictive analytics.